Hi, this is Mr. West, and today we're doing a Khan Academy tutorial on solve for an angle and right triangles. This was a special request from uh, commenter Zaboy. So thanks for commenting. Let me know if you have a, another video request. That's for anybody. But anyway, we're solving for right triangles here, angles in them. I'll show you what we're going to do. This is for trigonometry concepts and geometry. So it says we're trying to find an angle B here. It shows us the triangle, says to round to the nearest hundredth. Let me go ahead and walk you through some of the steps. Again, if you need help with additional steps or this is too fast, this is kind of going under the assumption that you have some training in uh, setting up trig ratios. But let me go ahead and give you the rundown. So number one, you want to label the sides. Given that you have a reference angle, in this case we want to know what B is. That's going to be our reference angle we need to label the sides. So over here in step one, I say label, and you'll see that the hypotenuse is always the longest side. That's always opposite the 90 degree angle. So we have our 90 degree angle right here, and we're gonna label our hypotenuse. I'm just gonna label it HYP, it's a little bit shorter. Opposite side is the one that is not touching the angle. So here we have reference angle B, the side not touching it is opposite to it. So as you can see, kind of like, is pointing to it in that direction. And then the adjacent side is the one that forms the angle along with the hypotenuse. So those are our angles there. Oh, sorry, that's our angle, reference angle, and then those are our sides. So we're done with labeling. Step one is done. Next, we are going to set up our trig relationship. So we wanna know what information do we have and what do we need for our trig relationship. So we have information on the hypotenuse. You can see that there's a side length given of seven. And then we have information on our adjacent side, which is three. We don't have anything on our opposite side. So guess what? We're not gonna use anything that has the opposite side in the trig identity. So for example, if we're looking down here, that's where my attention is right now. Uh, you can see that we're not gonna use sine because we need the opposite sign. We need a length for the opposite side for that. And we're not gonna use tangent because that's the same thing. We need opposite over adjacent. We don't know what the opposite side is. So we're gonna stick with just the cosine here. So for our cosine, we need the adjacent over the hypotenuse. And this takes us to step three, which is solve for the angle. So let me show you what this looks like. We know that we're gonna be using cosine. Let me change the color actually. I'll change it to purple. So we know we're going to be using the cosine. We don't know what angle B is. I'm going to put it like this, angle B, cosine of angle B. But we know it's equal to the ratio of the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. So I know, let me go ahead. Actually, I'm going to keep it surface level. This is the uh, trig relationship we're using. We know that instead of theta, we were trying to find the measure of angle B. And we know that the adjacent side is three units, and then the hypotenuse is seven. So that's our trig relationship. Now, a lot of people get stuck here. They're like, well, what do I do from here? Well, you can see that it's kind of like solving for a multi-step equation. We have our angle B we're trying to solve for, but right now it is being cosined. So what we need to do is we actually need to inverse cosine both sides. Let me show you what that looks like. So I'm gonna put inverse cosine over here and inverse cosine over here. And what are we inverse cosigning? We are inverse cosigning just everything that we have currently. So cosine of angle B, I'm gonna write it like that. And then we have three over seven. Okay, this is kind of like the long way to do it, but this is just to show you why we do these steps. So what happens here is the cosine, inverse cosine, which is that negative one, it's not really negative one or whatever. It's just called inverse cosine. What we're doing here is it cancels out the cosine and we're left with just angle B. That's what we're trying to find. And then, whoops, I forgot my equal sign. And then on the right side, we have the inverse cosine of three over seven. So I'm just gonna go ahead and type in inverse cosine. I need a calculator for this portion. So make sure you have a calculator and it needs to have trig functionality. Okay, the button I am pressing, you actually have to hit the second button for to get to, and then it's gonna be cosine negative one. That's what I'm looking for. So I'm gonna type in cosine negative one, and actually there's gonna be parentheses, and I'm just gonna type in three divided by seven. That's what it looks like on my calculator. So I have three divided by seven, 
inverse cosine, and what I get with my calculator is I get 64.62, and I'm rounding to the nearest hundredth, and this is what it is rounded to the nearest hundredth. So I'm just going to type in 64.62. 64.62. And that should be good. All right, moving on to the next question. So now we're going to do the same thing, okay? So everything I just showed you in the first step, I'm going to show you that it's kind of a simple process once I have the hang of it. So I identify my reference angle here. I'm going to label my sides next. So this is my hypotenuse, and this is my opposite side. Okay, so um, next I'm going to identify the trig function that uses uh, hypotenuse and opposite side in it. And that is sine. So I know my sine uses those two functions, or sorry, those two sides. That's what it looks like. I'm going to replace, so sine of not theta, but angle B equals the opposite side over the hypotenuse. Next, since I'm trying to get B by itself, what I want to do, whoops, is I want to inverse sine to both sides. So inverse sine to both sides. And I'm just going to put a big inverse sine like that. The whole point is it gets rid of the sine of B, leaving me just the angle B, and then I need to do inverse sine of 2 divided by 3 or 2 thirds on my calculator. So that's the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to type in inverse sine of, sorry, I have a cat, <laughs> inverse sine of 2 over 3, and we have angle B equals 41.81. Okay, and that's my answer. I'm just gonna make sure it's rounded. So technically the next digit is important. So I have 810 and um, this, sorry, this uh, number tells me that I just gonna leave the at 0.81, that's rounded to the nearest hundreds. This next place is the thousands place. So I get 41.81 as my answer for that angle, 41.81. I'm actually a big fan of inverse trig. I think it's easier than regular trig. And let's do just finish this off. So I'm gonna use all the same color now just to speed things up. We have our reference angle right here. I know this is my opposite side. This is my adjacent side. We're not using the hypotenuse this time. So we're gonna be using tangent. You need to know your trig identities for this. So make sure you know your trig identities. And we know that tangent of, of theta is equal to opposite over adjacent. We're gonna replace it with the information that we're looking for angle A and the information that we know. So that's opposite 8 over adjacent 7. We're going to inverse tangent to both sides. I said I was going to keep it the same color. <laughs> I almost changed it. So I knew that that cancels that out. I'm left with angle A. Tangent of negative 1. I don't know why I said that. Inverse tangent of <laughs> 8 over 7. So I do inverse tangent 8 divided by 7 on my calculator and I get angle A equals 48.81. The next number is 4, so I don't care about the 4 anymore. I don't need to round up or anything. 48.81. So 48.81. And I'm on to the last question. So it's kind of nice that we've had a sine, cosine, and a tangent. Let's see what the last one is. So we have here angle B is what we're looking for. That's our reference angle, and we know that we're given the adjacent side and the hypotenuse. I believe that was the same as our first one, which is cosine. And then I can just go here, angle B uh, equal to, and then adjacent 2 over 5. You can see I skipped a step uh, talking about what the cosine is. I just go ahead, went ahead and put 2 over my hypotenuse 5. So I know I need to go cosine, inverse cosine, sorry, of both sides, and I get angle B equals inverse cosine of 2 over 5. Go ahead and just pop that right into your calculator. 2 over 5, 2 divided by 5, and I get uh, angle B equals 66.42. The next digit was 1. I don't need to round up, so 66.42 is my final answer, 66.42. And that's all there is to it. So if you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a comment if you want to see more videos like this. Um, I'm really kind of just catering to my subscribers and viewers. So if you need help with something specific or you want to see something specific done with mathematics, let me know in the comment section. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I look forward to seeing you next time right here on West Explains Best.